interviews we conduct. Do you have any questions about anything at all? Not at all. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just turn this off. Um, just a couple of things to note. Um, everything that you tell me is confidential to the authority, so we will not be giving police a copy of anything that, that we talk about. Um, however, there, there will be a public report and some of what you say may end up in the public report. Um, but you would be anonymised, so you would be Mr. A, B, C or D. Um, and even if there's information in the report, uh, police cannot use that in any proceedings, like criminal or employment, uh, and, and nor can anyone else. Wonderful. So that's, um, and also we're not subject to the Official Information Act, so people can't request information that we hold on them, and we don't have to release it. So. Perfect. Yeah. I'll just turn this on and there'll just be, I just need to do a bit of introduction, time, day, place, uh, who's in the room. Sure, I understand completely. Okay, so do you have any questions before we start? I uh, don't, I think I'm, I'm well briefed. Okay. Okay, so that's recording. Uh, the date is Wednesday the 18th of October. My name is Sarah Bullen, I'm an investigator with the Independent Police Conduct Authority. I'm at the ANZ Centre in Albert Street, Auckland. Um, and also in the room I have... Simon Robert Anderson. Thank you, Simon. And um, Simon, as you are aware, the authority is conducting an independent investigation into the police response to the Level and Sweet Rally that was held in Albert Park in March of this year. Um, and so I've, oh, you've very kindly agreed to talk to us about your observations um, and your involvement with that. So thank you very much for that. Um, so I just want to go, the things I would like to talk to you about are A, your observations on the day, but also the video footage that you've very kindly provided. So we might start at the beginning and just start with your observations of the day and then as we go, or later on, I might just ask some questions about the video footage that we have. Okay. Um, so I guess the first thing is, is just some background information really on how you came to be at the rally and what your involvement was with it. Well, um, what, what, what happened was uh, that I'd bought this 360 camera, yeah. which I was intending to use to uh, film in Africa uh, for a trip, which I've subsequently postponed, but I, I needed to, to practice with it. So I, I heard that Posey Parker was going to be speaking in, in Albert Park, and I contacted the organisers and said, listen, I'm a photographer, I want to practice my camera, would you be happy if I came along and filmed? Okay, so you, the, so you, the organisers of the rally. Yes. Okay, so who did you speak to? Uh, I spoke with a lady by the name of uh, Katrina Biggs, right. uh, who okay. was, to my knowledge, a representative of the Let Women Speak. Okay. And, and okay. Um, they were, uh, of course, because you know I'm, I'm entitled to film in public, yeah. but uh, it was just really being polite, and they were, they were happy for me to do so, which was, which was kind of them. Okay. So could you just tell me about what happened on the day, really, where you were and Well, I was quite close to the rotunda and um, I, I, I witnessed the events. I, I saw the, um, the trans rights activists break down the fences and rush it and start assaulting people. Okay. We might start from back, go back a bit. Um, so this is, a, this is a, like a map of the area. So what time do you think you, or what time did you arrive? I would have been there shortly before 11am. So uh, I, I came in and there was a, a, a gated entry and um, the stewards were, uh, are clear, were clearing people and I, I'd arranged with Let Women Speak that I would introduce myself to the stewards, make myself known and that sort of thing. So. Um, I did that and was in position to start filming before the event was due to kick off at about 11. So I would have been there at about 10.45, I think. Okay, and where were you standing when you started filming? Uh, about three or four metres in front of the rotunda. Right. We might just, so um, around there, where the, or uh, in front of that 
walkway there? It would be about here. Okay, all right. So you were with the, the Let Women Speak? Uh, I, I, no, I wasn't with them. Um, there were stewards moving around me, but other than I had no interaction with them at all, other than the, inter the, the initial introduction. Oh, right, okay, okay. So you arrive here about, um, I think you said about 20 to 11? Yeah, 20, yeah. probably 15 minutes beforehand, okay. so I think 10.45, okay. but, but I, I think I can probably determine the time from the, the footage. I think it's, it, it is actually uh, time-stamped. That was one of my questions. Oh, good, okay. Um, all right, so and what, what, were your, what did you observe when you first arrived? Well, when I, when I first arrived, there were, um, out, outside of the second uh, um, barrier, yeah. was a lot of angry trans rights activists. But inside the rotunda, it was primarily uh, people who were, tended to be later in life, uh, middle-aged people and so on, and very few who were just simply there to, to listen to people speak. And um, the, the contrast between the two groups uh, couldn't have been greater. Okay. So when you say they, that they were angry, can you describe for me what they were doing that made you think they were angry? Oh, they were, um, they were screaming and shouting and really frothing at the mouth. I mean, it was, it was, it was a crowd that was whipped up into a frenzy. They really were unhinged. Okay, and this was about 22? Yes. Did you, how were you feeling about the situation? Were you feeling, did you feel unsafe or worried about anything? I wasn't, I, I didn't feel so unsafe. I, I mean, I've, I've felt unsafe since because, because since these events, the, the, the thing is that, that because I was holding a, a 360 de degree camera on a three metre long selfie pole, it's, it's rather an unusual thing and and people weren't really conscious of what I was actually doing. Um, subsequently, they now know who I am and I've been subject to threats and all of that sort of stuff. But in, in this circumstance, um, they, everyone just kind of left me to it. And I think it's primarily because they didn't actually understand what I was doing. Right, okay. So I didn't, I didn't feel at all unsafe, um, but I did feel the threat towards the women from 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 these people. Okay. And your observations of the police at this time? There were no police. Um, well, that's not quite correct. The police were over here, uh, and I knew this because after the sixteen minutes of footage of the, the you know the, the prime material that I've provided to you, yeah. I wandered over, and this is where I first encountered police. Okay. Now you would have seen in the footage that four or five police actually pass behind me. Yeah. Now, what I think what I think happened in that circumstance was that they had been called to the rally point. Right, okay. Good Hello. afternoon. Good afternoon, how do you do? This Warren. is uh, my colleague, Warren. 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 Please Warren. Please Warren. Please to make your acquaintance. Thank you for meeting with us. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Apologies for, for lateness with the aircraft and all kind of parking. No <laughs> trouble at all, Warren, no <laughs> trouble at all. Oh my gosh. No, no, I just went down to the downtown yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so we've ju we're just talking about when Simon first arrived. About and it's about twenty to eleven. Yep. Um, so, so when so at twenty to eleven there was your observations of the police were, was that there was none, none in that area there. None at all. Okay. All right. So what I think with the four or five officers that did actually cross my path around about 11 a.m. was that they had been called to the rally point and rather than going around it they went through the crowd they they showed no at that point um the the trans rights activists had breached the barriers and were assaulting people around the rotunda right um but uh they had no interest in that their, their sole interest it appeared to me was getting across the crowd to the the police rally point did you, um, okay, actually we might just go back a bit before we go into that in a bit more detail. So tell me what happened when um, Kelly J or Posey Parker arrived. What, what happened 
when she arrived, she was escorted in by private security and was being um, heavily harassed uh, on, on the way into uh, to, to the rotunda. Uh, once she arrived there, because at that point, uh, the, the trans rights activists had breached both the barriers and were in very close proximity to the rotunda. And uh, of course, you had um, uh, her assailant was also positioned on there to, to assault her. Yeah. And um, they, they arrived at the rotunda, they tried to set up to start speaking. Uh, she was assaulted. And uh, and then the private security uh, manoeuvred her out. Um, the private security moved all the way through here to about here before they encountered police. So I'm just trying to get the the um, sequence of events in terms of the police that walked by you. So. As I understand it, Kelly J or Posey Packer arrives. Do you know where she was when the barriers were breached, roughly? Ah, uh, the barriers were breached before she arrived. Before she arrived? Yes. Okay. Do you know where that started or where the first barriers, like where, where was the breach? Was it? Ah, uh, it, it, it was breached all over. All over, um, okay. And in, in, in multiple locations, it was torn down. Uh, piece by piece, uh, over the, over, perhaps a period of five minutes. Okay, was there anything that triggered that that you could see or hear? Or? It, it was really, it was just uh, really, really angry people just frothing at the mouth who who just had um, the intention of uh, inflicting harm against women. So what were they doing when they breached the when they breached the barriers and? Um, we're moving towards the rotunda. They they breached the barriers and they were screaming and shouting and that's when the, the assaults commenced. Okay. Can you recall what they were saying? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it it was a little bit difficult because they were they were making an awful lot of noise, but mostly it was it was chants of things like trans rights are human rights, uh, Nazi go home, um, that sort of thing. So can you just explain to me how did how did Posey, how did Posey Parker come in? And did she she came from here. So she came to there and came through the trees to there. And then they also yes. And where were the protesters? She was coming this way. They were they were all around all the right rotunda, there. all around here. Or she had to um, run the gauntlet through them. Through them. Okay, that's what I was asking. Yeah. Right. So there were there were counter protesters sort of there as well as round here. Absolutely. And she had to uh, Absolutely. The, through them. Did they part ways to Not really, no. Them? They 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 um security had to push their way through uh to, to get her to the rotunda and they were being assaulted along the along the path. When you say assaulted, can you describe that? Um, Kept and punched. Okay. And did you you saw that? Yes. Okay. All right. So Posey Packer came onto the rotunda, and then what happened after that? What's the next thing? Uh, they were trying to set up and uh, to speak, but there were a lot of screaming people uh, uh, right there, and eventually they made the decision that it was not safe and that they should get her out of there, which I think they should have, that's a con conclusion they should have reached earlier. Um, I understand from the security personnel that they made a number of phone calls to police uh, requesting assistance, which, which wasn't forthcoming, uh, and then they, they escorted her out, um, being subject to even more assaults. Okay. All right, so tell me, tell me more about the part where the police walked across. And, was it in front of you or behind you? It was behind. Behind you. Can you tell me about that? Uh, well, I, I, I didn't actually notice that when it... When, I only saw it in the footage subsequently because I actually wasn't looking in that direction. And that, that's one of the issues with 360 degree cameras is I'm not necessarily looking in the direction where the, 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 the camera is. So um, those four or five police, I suspect they were, they were posted somewhere around here and were called to the police rally point. And rather than going around to it, walked through the crowd. Now, here's the thing. They had 
Posey Parker was on the um, rotunda at that point, and in my opinion, none of those police had any interest whatsoever in, uh, in, in, in seeing to her welfare. All they were concerned about was getting across the crowd to the police rally point. So the police rally point, you're pointing to that's Princess Street? Yes. So what was happening in the rotunda, though, at that point in time? Uh, she'd been assaulted, uh, as had another woman, and there were uh, screaming trans rights activists uh, within the rotunda assaulting people. So they were actually in the rotunda? Yes. Okay. And when you say they were assaulting people, what were they doing? Uh, all sorts of things. They were. There was a lot of pushing and shoving, um, punches, kicks, things like that. They were... Um, they were you know, they were, they were angry. Okay. And how did you know that was happening? Because I could see it. Right, so from your position here? Yes. You could see that? I could see happening. that happening, yes. Okay. And how far from you were the police when they walked by? Uh, they were behind me, probably one or two metres. Okay. Was, was it evident to you why they were going from there to there? It wasn't at all, um, but... After Warren, after, after as, as I explained to Ms. Bullen um, before you arrived, after I filmed that crucial 16 minutes, I wandered over here, which was the first time that I actually encountered any police whatsoever. Yeah. Um, the, the key thing is that those four or five officers walking behind me um, was not, it, it wasn't apparent to me at the time. I, I actually didn't see them. It was only until I saw the footage subsequently that I realised that they were anywhere near me. And, and within my footage, that is the only police presence in this critical area throughout the 20, 25 minutes or so of footage that I've, that I've, that I've taken. Okay. So you didn't observe how the police react, how the crowd reacted to the police walking through? I didn't, know. Okay. Do you think that they would have seen what was happening in the rotunda? I think if they'd cared to, to look in that direction, they would have, uh, but I, 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 I didn't see them do so myself, and looking at the footage, I haven't either, but, but here's the thing, I, you know, it's really calling for speculation because this is not something that I personally witnessed, uh, and, and I don't feel that I'm, I can speak to their intention. Yeah, I guess what I'm wondering is, so what was between you and the rotunda? When you when the assaults were occurring, uh, many people. Okay. Both protesters and counter protesters. Uh, yeah, mostly protesters. I, I, it would be fair to say that um, the that those there to, to listen to Posey Parker speak would have been outnumbered twenty to one. So by the time the barriers were breached and the trans rights activists had stormed the rotunda, um, they were you know. 99% of the people there. Um, there were there were people who were trying to protect uh, protect the women and protect Posey Parker, uh, but they were severely outnumbered. So in answer to your question, most of the people that I saw would have been uh, trans rights activists. Okay. So we, I haven't um, spoken to police yet, and they, this is not what they've said to me, but if they were, say I was to sort of talk to them and they say to me, well, yeah, we walked through there, but we couldn't see what was happening on there because of the crowds of people. What would you say to that? I would say that that is extremely unlikely. Because? Because it was very apparent that what, what was going on, that this was the focus of attention, that this was the target of all of those people who were dedicated to, to um, inflicting harm, and, and th that's, that's what they were doing. All right, so the other thing is um, that I was wanting to talk to you about is the timings. And I think you said that there, is a, there was a timestamp on the footage that you, that you took? I suspect there is, but I'd, I'd have to go back and look. Okay. Would you... What we're interested in is how long uh, Kelly J was in the rotunda before she was taken out by the security? Got it. I would... If I was to guess, I would say it was between five and ten minutes. Okay. But I can I can determine that accurately. Okay. 
that would be that would be useful to know. Actually. And and you also want to know not just how long, but also the times. Yes, and the, yeah, and, and the times. And the times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really helpful. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you think we need to know about what happened? All I can say is that uh, the police were not there, and they ought to have been. Uh, in my opinion, um, the, their duty of care to enable peaceful to peace, peacefully protest was wholly absent. In my opinion, they withdrew entirely from the park to allow the trans rights activists to assault people. Are you, are you suggesting that there was a, some sort of bias in there? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Why do you think that is? For a number of reasons, because like this, th this section here between the two barriers was the natural position, it seems to me, for police to be positioned to keep the peace, to keep the crowd separated, and to just make sure that everyone could have their say without there being any sort of concern. Instead, what they did is completely pull back and allowed the TRAs to pull down fences, come into the ticketed, gated area, and assault people. Were there any security staff around here? There were women who were stewards. But not the security personnel. But not the security personnel. So, so for the, the security personnel were um, close personal security for Posey Parker. Yeah. So they were... Um, there were five or six of them, and they were, um, thankfully, uh, in her very, very close proximity, which allowed her to move through the crowd. So until the barriers were broken down, no one was in there? Except for some women marshals. Marshals, marshals. So when you were standing here before the barriers were broken, how were you feeling about the situation? Like, did you, Did you think that something... might happen or like how are we in terms of how this is going to play out i was i was um how would you say i i was to a degree just a neutral observer and waiting to just see what would happen uh, but as the crowd got uh, ever more enraged i could see that um you know something bad was going to happen Excuse me, when did you arrive? About a quarter to 11, I think. A quarter to 11, right, okay. So, yes, and no police officers were there at 10.40, you said before, so that was actually when you arrived, they just broke the camera. Yeah, okay. So everyone else was, the, the, the trans rights activists were there in force by the time you got there? Yes. Have you spoken to any of the like let women speak? I have. Uh, what what's what's happened since I um, started publishing footage is uh, that I've been approached to provide uh, evidentiary material for people who were assaulted, and you know I've taken the time to do that. So I, I do a flat. Someone says, "Look, you know your camera was pointing in this direction at this point in time, and I was assaulted and stuff like that." So so I I, I do the exports. Um, so that so that people can can uh, use that material for evidentiary purposes. Um, the other thing is that um, that that you know some of the people who were assaulted are, as I'm sure you found from your investigation, severely traumatised, and uh, have required a, a a fair amount of you know emotional support as as you know as an empathetic person that you that you would provide. So yes. Uh, I've had an awful lot of discussions with people who are in that, in that circumstance. Okay. Have they said to you how they were feeling about the situation before Project Park arrived? They've, they've talked to me about it, yes. Can you tell me what they said? Uh, well, they were, um, particularly for the marshals, you know, it was their role to try and keep the crowd separated and for the, to, 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 to ensure people's safety. And uh, their failure to do that weighs heavily upon them, in my experience. Okay. Um, and you talked about some threats that you were, you've been receiving. Oh yeah. Right. Well, you get that right. So, um, so because you know, the, for for the trans rights activists, um, they're they're very very conscious that uh, 
the material that I've published, including OIA responses, video footage, and all that sort of thing, doesn't paint them in a good light. And uh, so, yeah, I've, I've been the target of abuse and threats and things like that. Online, yeah, ever since, and it's it's you know it's 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 in very few people's interest for Simon to keep talking, because you know I'm I'm exposing the truth of what happened here, the truth of how the police did not um, perform their function adequately, uh, the truth of how the trans rights activists went there with the intention of hurting people and did so. Have the police asked you for your material? They have not, and I've offered it. Uh, I called police two months ago uh, and quoted the reference number of the two assaults that they are prosecuting and offered myself as a witness and for my footage to be used, and neither investigating team has got back to me. Do you know who you I just called the main number of uh, oh, Auckland police. Okay. So just in relation to, do you have any more questions about the actual incident itself? No, not this morning. Just in relation to the footage, um, so thank you very much for the effort that you've gone to do to, to provide that, because I know it wasn't, wasn't that straightforward, is it? Um, so can you just describe for me um, how you took it and what, um, what you've done with it since. So I'm just wanting you, to, I guess, to confirm that it's what we've received is hasn't been manipulated or edited or anything like that. It has not been mani manipulated in any way. And as you know, I've provided you with the raw files, so you can determine that 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 it is uh, a true and accurate account uh, and not been manipulated at all. What I've done is I've published. Uh, the 360 material to YouTube yeah. and flat exports to it of it from uh, to YouTube and to Twitter uh, where it's been picked up. So it's been syndicated by international media and all of that sort of stuff and seen by millions of people around the world. Um, but no, it has not been manipulated and um, and, and uh, with the raw files that I provided, you can authenticate that that, that that is the case and I'd encourage your IT support yeah. to, 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 to perform that function for you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And um, so when you were taking the footage, were you in this position? Yes. So you didn't move from that? Nope. So it's all from there? It is. Uh, there is a subsequent clip where uh, I walked over here and moved back around. It's about a five minute long clip, but no, that, that crucial 16 minutes and the five minutes of the barriers being broken down are all taken from this position. That position. Okay, all right. So it really is the case, Sarah, that um, it was all happening in front of me. Yeah. So I was facing it and I could see it. Yeah, totally. Um, and so did you have any interaction with the police at all during the day? No. No conversation? No, nothing at all. Um, that's all I have actually, but it would be really useful to, to know the time when that footage was taken um, and specifically how long that period of time was between Project Parker arriving um, and leaving. And then I'd like to try and match that with the time in which, you know, when we see the four police officers walking across. So we can I'll have that determined for you by the end of the day. Great, thank you very much. That's awesome. Can I just ask too that when you um, you've been providing evidence and material to people who've been assaulted, so there are two police investigations, but are there other complainants that have asked yes. for and been given evidence of assaults on them yes. that are not subject to prosecution? Yes. At the do you know if they've provided what you gave to them? Please. I do. Uh, in the case of the, the female steward that I think you've already interviewed, uh, she provided footage uh, which the police have decided not to prosecute. Yeah, that's Linda. Yeah. 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 So that's the, that's the other one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Alright, thank you. That's all I have. Um, Is there anything else that you 
feel we ought to know and what the law does? Not at all. I, I, I think I've, I've, I've said everything that I can speak to myself, yeah. but I, I'm really conscious that I can only speak to things that I personally witnessed. Yeah. And um, I'm, I, I, I don't think I should speculate uh, in any regard. Yeah. I mean, the footage is invaluable because it's literally... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you, you've, you've been enormously helpful. You've been very grateful. Yeah, yeah, super helpful. And I'm grateful to you too, Sarah and Warren. Thank you, thank you yeah, very much for yeah. taking the time to see me. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'm just going to turn that corner off.